<laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Lorene from Creation Crochet. How are you? Uh, today's show is brought to you by Darn Good Yarn. You can check out their uh, all reclaimed and repurposed, uh, recycled yarns at www.darngoodyarn.com. It is not your grandma's yarn. Our uh, guest for today is Sarah of Tangled Happy. So everyone say hi to Sarah. Hello. So Sarah uh, and I uh, met probably about, was it like six months ago? Maybe it was a little bit longer. Yeah, maybe. Um, what what pattern was it that you shared of mine first? Do you remember? Um, I would have to go back. I know recently I shared your striped scarf because I loved that the purple and gray one. I don't I don't remember um, what it was. The first one. I don't remember. Sarah had um had uh, commented on my blog that she was going to share one of my patterns, and it, it was right after I started. So maybe it was even longer than six months ago. And I was like so ecstatic. I'm like, I love her dog. She's gonna share something. Aww. Um, and we just kind of started talking since then. And recently, Sarah uh, had mentioned on her Facebook page that she was going to be relaunching her Etsy shop. Uh, so we had talked a little bit about that, and then we decided that we would have her on the show to to discuss that. So um, currently, uh, you just have mostly patterns on your Etsy shop, right? Yes, I currently have. Um, all patterns except for my newest design, which is the turban headband. And I want to go through and add more items, but I kind of have to go through and make them again and um, figure out, you know, how much time it takes and materials and things like that, and then I can start listing. Um, I had wanted to start my Etsy shop, restart, relaunch my Etsy shop, but um, I've been too kind of crazy with other stuff going on, so it, it's getting put on the back burner. Eventually, I'm hoping to do it, but. Uh, we talked about ways to have a successful Etsy shop. So this is kind of just a synopsis. I'm going to be doing a blog post on it as well, but uh, there are you can go into more detailed information. There is a book called uh, blog, or Etsy for Dummies, just like the you know everything for dummies. I haven't read it, but I have uh, heard a lot of people say it's very good. There are forums on Etsy that you can go to. You can type in Etsy for for dummies, and it will um, one of the things that will come up is one of the forms for Etsy, and I think there's groups on uh, Ravelry for it as well. There's a lot of information. A lot of different bloggers have stuff out there too. But um, one thing Sarah and I discussed is good photography, and I linked Sarah's uh, blog in uh, my Facebook page. I'll do it again later too. She has some very good photography, and uh, most of the pictures are of her of her kids. There's a lot of pictures of her children. So we had talked about uh, trying to uh, do your pictures on people as, as much as possible. But uh, a lot of us don't have kids of all ages or you know different um, people of all sizes and ages to take pictures of. So what are, what are some of the things that you've seen, Sarah, that you, you think are, are good displays for, for Um I have seen people use, like for a baby hats and things, maybe like a wine glass um, where the stem looks really nice underneath. Um, the ball of yarn, even, I think even laying flat, if the piece is really nice, it can be okay. Um, I think white backgrounds look really nice, especially under flat pieces. Um, and honestly, when I make a new design and I'm looking for, like, let's say, you know, I have a vision in my mind already, like, what I want the photo to look like, but I'm I'm very visual, and sometimes even though it's in my head, it's like, I kind of want to see what I'm thinking. So sometimes I will actually just go on the EC and just search all kinds of different things just to see how people are doing their photos. And sometimes that just gives me ideas of a place to start with, you know, whatever my new thing is that I'm getting ready to photos of. Oh, that's a, that's a good idea, too. You know, check out other uh, Etsy pages and look around, um, see what appeals to you, because at the same time, you're going to, you need to be happy with it. So yeah. uh, look around and see what kind of pictures appeal to you. You don't want to copy someone else's. If right. something's very unique, you know, you don't want to copy yeah. it, per se, but it can <laughs> inspire you to do something else. Yeah. Um, uh, like for scarves, I've seen them hung on banisters, mm -hmm. um, like stairways that looks really mm -hmm. nice. Uh, even on the back of a chair, or even hung on a doorknob. If you're going to do a hanger, just make sure it's a, you know, it's a nice hanger. Don't just use like a, a plastic or, you know, no wire hangers from, um, 
from your uh, closet, you know, get something nice. Or even you can even crochet on the, the hanger to, to make it look um, yeah. decorative. But there's lots of different things, uh, different creative ways you can um, hang it outside. I've seen enough things hung mm -hmm. on clotheslines. They look really nice. Yeah, clotheslines, I like that too. You want to um, almost the most importantly make sure you have good lighting. Mm -hmm. um, and the best lighting is in the shade on a very, mm -hmm. like on a, a bright time of the day. So mm -hmm. my um, backyard is uh, light in the morning hours and my front yard is late in the afternoon hours. So I will uh, go outside when there's still shade in the backyard and I'll put my, um, I get like I have a big white piece of poster board and mm -hmm. I just put that down and um, you know I take my pictures then. So you want to make sure you're not in direct sunlight yeah. uh, and that you're in the shade and no flash because the flash kind of it throws shadows and, and makes things look funny. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to shoot into the sun. You want to shoot with the sun uh, behind you, but you want to make sure that it's not casting shadows. So I, do you do your photography? I do do my photography, and I typically just do it at my house. And it's funny because I live in just an average home in the city um, with a you know reasonable size backyard. But I... It's weird because I'm always like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, um, like with the turban headband. I love the way the photos came out for that, and it was so funny because my mom was like, oh, where did you get that really cool barn wood? Because it kind of had like a barn wood background, and I was like, oh, well, that's our shed, you know, where it actually needs to be replaced, but it looks really cool in a photo. Yeah, they were really cool looking. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, it, you know, if you can just kind of take a look around your home and, you know, find unique ways to use things that you already have to help highlight your photos. There's a lot of times too that um, something you think is ugly, almost like your side of your shed that really right. makes it your place. It has a very like a rustic look to it. Um, mm -hmm. When I had done some uh, pictures with my photographer, her studio is next to um, like an old um, bar. There's like a bar in the backyard and there's like mm -hmm. falling down fences and we sat in there and we just took like a really bright pretty chair and I sat on this, yeah. this pretty chair so it's like this prettiness in this midst of all this like um, falling apart you know mm -hmm. over weeded area and, and like they came out really nice yeah. sometimes even just seeing like um, you know, if you're going to do pictures of a dish towel or a dishcloth put it in your kitchen um, mm -hmm. you know or put some food around it or you know or something that's going to kind of um, make it look like it's just you know being used in your home Right. But, you know, a nice, neat version of that. So, um, mannequins, too. I mean, you can see my mannequin. I don't want to show you all of her. She doesn't have, <laughs> doesn't have any pants on right now. I decided I wanted them back. Um, but, you know, I bought a mannequin. I have a mannequin head. She's a little freaky looking. Um, her eyes are a little, a little scary. I have, like, four styrofoam heads, too, that I completely forgot that I even owned. But um, I like my mannequin because she doesn't have a head, so it doesn't look as freaky. But, you know, I have a white wall in my house, and um, mm -hmm. I just put it on my white wall and make sure that I have good good lighting in that area. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be, like, a professional photo. Right. You do want it to be no distractions, no mm -hmm. um, clear everything out of the way. So you don't want to have, like, uh, you know, a, a, unless it's meant to be in the picture. Sometimes you want to have, like, a bowl or something kind right. of, like, in the... But not like dirty laundry or something yeah. like that. A kid running through the background <laughs> right. or the TV or, or something like that. Like mm -hmm. you want it to be a little artistic looking. Right. So take a look around at you know at these other um, Etsy pages mm -hmm. and you might be inspired to, to do something. Right. Um, another tip that I heard um, about photography that's really helped me was, um, and it was uh, I think it was even for listing on Etsy. It said you know, get really close, and it says, when you think you're close enough, get closer, because, you know, um, a lot of times if things, you know, even if there's, if there doesn't need to be a lot of background, especially if it's just the item, you know, really zoom in on it and get a close shot, it kind of will show the stitches and the color, and I just think that's a really good tip, because getting well, I close do, makes a difference. I do, I do also recommend having, um, you know, they give you, like, what, five, five pictures that you can yes. put on? Yeah. Use all use use the five pictures. Yeah. Um, I typically, when I'm modeling something for uh, like a headband or a necklace or um, you know a scarf or a cowl, I like to take a couple shots. I like to take uh, one or two that are, are from a distance, so you can mm -hmm. see like the whole picture. Sometimes having um, a, an outfit put together and something mm -hmm. look nice sells sells a, an item. 
believe it or not. You know, they're they're not going to be wearing the same clothes you're wearing. They're not going to look like you. <laughs> not going to be in the same area. Right. But it it they're almost buying into that. You know, they're almost buying into the image that you're portraying. So yeah. wear a nice outfit. Um, make it look you know all cohesive. Take a couple pictures of your whole body. You know, or or half of your body, and then take a couple pictures close up of the of you wearing the item, and then take a couple pictures of just the item displayed in a different way, or worn in a different way, or just like Sarah said, just the the stitches or the colors, or um, you know, so that people can can click through and look at all the different pictures and get a very good idea of, of what it looks like. Um, is there anything else for for pictures? Oh, um, well, we'll talk about that in listing. Well, we can talk about it now, and then we'll go into listings for um, colors when you're doing lots of different colors. Okay. So um, I know you had said you were going to be doing it with with your item, with your yes. items. Um, what I did was for this first one, um, I actually went through and made little crocheted hearts in each color that was available, and then I just printed a piece of paper and I had um, the, the color name under the each heart. And then also in Etsy now, when you're listing an item, um, and maybe that was here before, but I think it's called variations, and you can actually put in every single color that is available. So um, not only could you, what? That's new. It is new. Okay. Um, so you can go to variations and you put in color, and it'll actually let you list every color you have available. And then when the people go to the listing, they can. Um, you know, click that drop-down box and select the color they want. But I think it's also still a good idea to somehow have a photo of the colors available because, I mean, obviously red and yarn could mean a hundred different things. Um, so, anyways, um, that's what I did. I did the heart, but I will say with my current listing, I didn't feel like the colors came out exactly true and that kind of bothered me, so I'm going to have to play around with it and, you know, see what else I can come up with, so, um, well, but one thing you do, oops, sorry, you go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, one thing you can do is a lot of the yarn companies have their swatch, their swatches available, oh, so like okay. if you go to, uh, say you're using, you know, Red Hearts with Love, if you Google Red Heart with Love, okay. they will have the different colors available, so, you could really you could put a link um, to that in your listing, or you can actually go through and, and cut, copy the pictures of, you know, that's you only true. have certain colors available. Okay. So that's going to show like the very true true color. Okay. Um, and that's another thing uh, with listings is, um, when you're doing your listings, people have different ideas of color. Like you said, red might mean you know something different to somebody else. So you want to be very specific, so they can't come back to you and say, yeah. well, you said this is red and it's not red. Right. So you definitely want to cover um, cover all your bases when you're doing your crochet because you might make a sale that's really not the biggest thing. You want uh, repeat customers. And right. not only that, but uh, for every um, interaction somebody has with the shop that they're happy with, they will tell like one person. If they are not happy, they will tell like 20 people. <laughs> so you definitely want to make your customers happy. Yes. Um, so one thing that Sarah and I uh, had talked about was listing descriptions, and I had mentioned putting washing instructions mm -hmm. in your listing description. Uh, one, because it's a it's good information for the the person to have. But two, mm -hmm. because if you put dry clean only or uh, you know wash cold water, and they wash it in hot water and it shrinks, then they can't come back to you and say, um, you know, I want my money back. So right. have you ever had um, you know a situation with with somebody like that? I have not had that situation yet, um, but I can see how that can easily happen. And I, you know, it's, it's an easy thing to add. Most yarn labels have right on them the washing directions, so it's a simple thing just to add in there and um, keep yourself safe and help the customers. So, yeah, I haven't had it happen, but I, I haven't. I've only sold a few things on Etsy. I haven't had my shop. Um, I had a shop two years ago that I did and I made um, you know a few sales but I, I never really I never listed a lot of things. I sell mostly in retail boutiques so I never really mm -hmm. listed a lot of stuff on my shop. But um like I said one day I'm hoping we're gonna relaunch it one day. Um, <laughs> but I would also put materials that you used. Right. Um, you know, if it's acrylic or um, cotton or silk or yeah. um, 
you know, wool. Some people are allergic to wool. Some people don't like polyester, you know, or acrylic, you know. So you definitely want to cover your bases by putting your materials. You can put the brand of yarn if you choose to. I personally don't or, or want yeah, to just do that either. Put what it what it is, um, and then let me look at my cheat sheet. Um, <laughs> Color choices, watch the sizes. So, one thing that um, Sarah and I both write patterns. So, one thing that I do try to do when I write my patterns, and I'm getting better at doing it, is using the, uh, the Yarn Council's um, what they uh, recommend in the way of abbreviations and such. But I'm also relying on them for my sizing. So, mm -hmm. they have size size charts. So if you sell something as a, a small, you want to make sure that it fits into uh, the Crochet Yarn Council's guidelines of that size because somebody might come back to you and say, well, this is, it says, you know, small and it's a medium, it doesn't fit me, it's too big for me, or it says large, it's too small for me. So when you're making, you know, a hat, you of course want to put, um, the circumference of it, you know, or something like that. But you definitely want to make sure you're following um, acceptable guidelines for sizing. So you just have your headband listed now. Um, but what other what other type of patterns are you or items are you going to get up there soon? Well, most of my items would not be fitted like that. And what I did, um, I did just research online as far as head circumferences and things. And because I have my patterns tested. I'm able to get an idea of, you know, is this really a good fit for this age group? Um, so on my listings, I actually do a size available and I put the age, but then I also put, you know, fits head circumference uh, 14 to 16 inches, let's say, for zero to six months. And that way, um, the person can, you know, measure their child's head and decide, you know, do I want to buy the zero to six months or the six to 12 months? So I guess we, we're doing that a little bit differently. Um, but and you're still putting you're still putting sizes. Yeah, right? I am. I'm just putting, you know I'm just saying we're doing it a different way, but I think both are acceptable. So you know, um, it might just be something for people to think about. But most of my other patterns wouldn't, besides my headbands, really you know size isn't a big issue. Like with my scarf, I might go ahead and put the dimensions of the scarf, um, or actually even any of my bags. I think it's a good idea especially if you're not using a person as a model to give the dimensions because, you know, looking at it from a picture, you really can't get an idea of what that size is in proportion to your body. So, um, you know, I think dimensions in general is a good idea. I didn't think about that too. That's a good point, dimensions, because mm -hmm. um, some people might like to wear things bigger or, or tighter or, you know, whatever. If it's like a scarf or a cowl, they, they yeah. probably would want to know what size is it. it saves you a lot of time it saves you people asking you questions <laughs> that's that they can see themselves now granted some people are not mm -hmm. going to see it and are going to ask you the questions anyway but mm -hmm. for that you can always just refer them back to the listing you can say you know all that information is in the listing if you have any other questions just let me know right um is there anything else that you can think of for for listing? Um, well the other thing i just wanted to also make sure that i mentioned um you can also list your sizes available in variations. So you can have color and size. So, and you actually may even be able to have more different, more than that, maybe three options. But um, I just wanted to let people know that you know you will be able to list your variations as far as size and color, and they'll have separate drop-down menus in the listing. That is actually not new, new. I mean, oh, okay, that's that's not that new. is. Okay. Uh, I I was thinking it was different than than what. Um, I think it's new as in like a year ago new. Okay. I, don't, I know they made a whole bunch of changes. I couldn't even tell you what those changges are <laughs> right now because I haven't been on it in a, in a while, but yeah. um, I know that people are talking about um, the changes that they have okay. made to Etsy. Um, so we had also discussed packaging and shipping. Mm -hmm. Shipping can be really, really expensive and you can lose money on shipping mm -hmm. if you don't do it the right way. How do you do your shipping? Okay, um, I this might sound funny to some people because I always feel like I make everything hard. But what <laughs> I basically did was um, I used the envelopes. I can't think what they're called. They're they're kind of they feel kind of plasticky, so they different, but they can't rip or tear. Poly. It's like paper. It's paper, but it's like got like a plastic sheet. 
Kind of. Okay. So I use those, and technically, if it was skinny enough, it could just go through regular mail. Um, but most of my items aren't. And so what I did was I would take, like, since I, right now I only have my headband listing, I put it in the envelope and I took it. I live very close to a post office. So I was like, you know, I just want to get this measured or weighed and find out how much it is to ship it. And basically they just gave me an idea and a range. Um, that is probably not the smartest way to do it. But I think if I'm shipping first class, it doesn't matter where it's going. It only matters on the weight. And then I also, I brought another one online and said, okay, well, what if I add another one? And that gave me an idea of where to start with my shipping. Um, so I think what, that, what prices did you find? Um, let me look. I want to say for one headband, um, which these are fairly light. They're made of acrylic yarn. Um, the shipping, I think, was right around between like 225 and 250 so, you know, I think that would be low. Yeah, it, it surprised me how low it was. And I think, though, that's because I was doing first class and I was not, like, going to track the item. So if you're going to be tracking the item, it probably changes it. Um, and then you're probably doing priority mail. Is what uh, I yeah, I always do priority mail, which okay. is why I guess mine are higher. Um, now they don't make charge you extra for the tracking. The tracking number oh. is in it. I mean, they they change the pricing, so you typically you really are paying. Technically, you really are paying for it, but you don't have to pay extra for it. Um, I like the tracking number because I like to be able to certain things that you sell. Like sometimes I used to sell in copious, um, which we'll talk about that later too for other online options. But they require a tracking number, okay. so you have to put in the tracking number when you send it to somebody before they will put the money in your account. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of why I started doing it. But I would say I would probably do like 4 to $5 for shipping okay. on something like that, I think, just because like well, I said, I do priority. As far, well, my decision to make first class for this item, you know, these are fairly inexpensive to make. It's more of just the time. Um, but I think, yeah, if you're doing a, a more expensive item where it costs more to make and it takes a lot of time, I would definitely want a tracking number. So. Um, because, you know, but one thing that you want to put in your Etsy shop is your policies. Mm -hmm. I forgot to write this down to discuss it, but um, when I first did my shop, I, I wrote it on my policies. So I have a return policy, and I have a shipping policy, and I have uh, you know customer satisfaction policy. Excuse me. Um, you know, and the way I have it set up is if they have paid me and they don't receive their item, then I'm either liable to refund them or liable to. Um, give them another item. So right. that's why I do the tracking. I think what's tracking is like a dollar or something if you pay okay. an extra for it. Um, because this way they can't say to me, oh, I never got it. Because mm -hmm. even if it is the only a $15, $20 item, I don't want to have to remake it again. Right. Or, or you know, refund them $15 or, right. or whatever it is. That's um, true. So that's personally why I do it. I'd rather pay the extra dollar for insurance. But it's it's up to you, you know, as a store owner, what, what you want to do with that regard. Um, you can do the envelopes. You can also purchase your own envelopes. So mm -hmm. I've bought envelopes from the dollar store or um, okay. from Staples or, or wherever. Of course, they're cheaper from the dollar store. But um, they have bubble wrap ones. They have regular ones. And you can just write on them, um, you know, the address and everything. And that's a cheaper option because you're not paying. When you ship something uh, through the post office, even though they give you the envelope free, they're you're still being charged for it. It's just okay. you know, you're not being separately charged for it, but it's definitely more expensive to ship with okay. it. Okay, that's good. To um, know. We had talked about too. I have not tried this, but someone has recommended to me doing PayPal first class. And you can do the option if uh, PayPal first class. You can either uh, opt to send it to UPS or the post office. And Sarah, you had said that people have recommended that to you, that you've heard good things about that as well, mm -hmm. right? The, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I guess you can just print your label and everything. So you would just go into PayPal, purchase the postage, and then print. And I think they, they come to you and pick it up, right? Because yeah, you can just print, print the label um, right off your printer, um, stick it on your package, and then you just you know, put it in the mailbox, or you can drop it off at the post office if you want. Okay. Um, I think you can schedule pickups too. 
I don't. I do everything the hard way too. I just bring it to. The <laughs> I do everything the hard way. Everything. Yeah. That's just. Um, I. I've always been that way. But um. <laughs> One thing, too, with your shipping is you, even though you're just sticking in an envelope, when that person opens the envelope, you want them to, to be, um, you know, you want them to, to get a little kick out of um, your wrapping. So I always wrap things in tissue paper. Um, so I just buy, you can get plain white, you can get color, and you can even, if you really want to get fancy, you can order um, wrapping paper from, like, Bags and Bows online and get your um, logo printed on it and, and all yeah. those things. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, eventually, you know, with when you're doing a, doing a shop, you can start off small and then mm -hmm. add add things as you go. As you get bigger, you can add better things, and that those better things are going to help you to grow bigger as well. So you kind of want to invest some of the money that you're making back into your shop. Um, but one thing I like to do is wrap it in like scrap pieces of yarn, like tie it with scrap pieces of yarn. Oh uh, yeah, that's cute. Um, okay. Or sometimes, sometimes you can even do a little added extra added gifts. Um, you know, we can talk about added gifts too. Um, that can be the the wrapping. You know, can be like you can do like one of those my sweet and simple hair ties or something. You know, a little hair bow and wrap that the package with that. Oh yeah, that would be cute. Make sure you put like a little note or something so people don't throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> or like I've pinned, I've done like a little flower pin on it. Mm -hmm. I actually sent my, my bride that I had just done her bouquet for. She emailed or texted me like two days before her wedding. She's like, the garter isn't here. I'm Aww. like, I swear to God, it was in the back, and she found it. It was, oh, good. I had wrapped everything in tissue paper. So I wrapped the bouquet in tissue paper, and the flowers all separate in tissue paper, and the, the garter. So the garter was so small that it just got shoved oh, back in the box. So she found okay. it, thank God, because I was like, your wedding's tomorrow. I don't think I can get you a new one. Or yeah, two I days. Thought. I don't think I can get you a new one. I saw your bouquet. It was beautiful. I saw it. Like, that was neat. So. I can't wait for her her like real wedding pictures. Um, <laughs> but you can also do things like enclose a little thank you note or um, uh, hand handwritten. It can be a little postcard that you had printed off. Do you mm -hmm. put anything in your your packages when you send them? I think that a little handwritten thank you is really nice. Um, I like to keep things really simple, so um, what I've been doing is um, printing a little business card, and on one side it just says tangledhappy.com, and the other side is, you know, thank you for shopping handmade. Um, my website's really simple, so you guys can imagine that's just kind of how I roll. So, um, but I definitely think a handwritten thank you is really nice. Yeah, it's a good, it's a nice little touch. Um, definitely include a postcard or a business card as well. Um, if it's your link you know, is not already on your business card, yeah. um, so people can contact. You can even put four or five business cards in it, and and put you know a note to hand out. You can do incentive programs with your clients, and if you want to get really fancy, you can uh, put little tracking numbers on your business cards, or you know, uh, little promo codes or whatever, so that people yeah. can earn rewards. And there's so much you can do do with with Etsy shops or with any online store. Um, the possibilities are, are really endless, but one thing I did um, with people was if they sent me a picture of the item, like a professional picture of the item, I would give them 15% off their mm -hmm. next purchase in my store because I wanted professional photos. You know, at that yeah. time I didn't have a photographer that I worked with. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. For people who don't do their own photography, um, I always work with a photographer. Um, in exchange for photo props or uh, mm -hmm. items for, it, for themselves, um, so just contact some local photographers and um, you know just put some feelers out there and say, oh, you know, I'd be willing to provide you, you know, crocheted items either for yourself or for your clients in exchange for photos. And a lot of them will take you up on it. I had um, contacted someone who was fairly new. She was a very good photographer, but she had just started her own, like, got her own studio and everything. So she was more than happy to to work with yeah. you wanted. Wanted props. Yeah, I think if you find a talented person that's starting out, they're definitely going to be receptive to that. So, yeah, there's it's, a lot it of. Doesn't even, yeah, it doesn't even have to be a, a professional. It can be a friend who has a nice. That's true. Yeah. You know, or you know, really, my girlfriend, my best friend, did my maternity photos for me, and I did her mater maternity photos for her. <laughs> and they look like professional photos. But, yeah. Um, you know, so you don't really have to have a professional and the editing software that is available now mm -hmm. um, I used used to use Pin, um, Picasa 
but I um, played on Pick Monkey, and I actually purchased their their um, advanced, you know, the the special mm -hmm. one that they give you. Let me just tell you, you can, <laughs> I have to. I'll do some before and after shots, but I went through my blog and I just did two pictures, and um, you know, I had the the wrinkles, the smile wrinkles. I used to be a smoker, you know, so I have, you know, from years ago when I smoked, and you know, I, I'm always doing this, and I have these wrinkles. Um, you know, or you like I have a zit on my cheek that's been here for like mm -hmm. three weeks. I, I made myself look absolutely my skin look absolutely gorgeous. Like I'm like, wow, I look pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, you can add mascara, you can add lip color, you can add blush, and you would wow. never know that you did it. Um, it it's really, um, it's pretty darn cool. And then you can of course put your watermarks on your photos, yeah. which is a very big thing. Make sure you have your name, your business name. Yeah on your photos because yeah. people like to steal things. Yeah, I just started doing that and I actually need to go back through and add it to all of them because I think it is, especially the fact that people are pinning things and sharing things and, you know, sometimes the link just doesn't, it's just not right. It just gets and lost. So, yeah, so if, you, if it's on the photo, it makes it really easy for them to find you. So I definitely recommend that. I have my blog. I, I have a lot of um, the old ones that that don't have my name, mm -hmm. and I used to just hand write my name. I did have my um, my girl who does my logos um, for me. Thank you, Miranda. I had her um, do a watermark for me, and I've been using that. So I've been trying to go back and, and do my do my photos over. Yeah. Um, one thing we did forget to talk about with shipping um, is uh, for your Etsy listing is whether to put shipping in the listing or to do free shipping and just include the price in your listing. So say you have a hat that you would normally sell for $20. You can either, I, I always just do like US shipping, uh, like $5. If it's um, you know a dollar in their favor, a dollar in my favor, most people don't squabble over you know less than a dollar. If it were more than that, I would refund them the money. Um, but I, um, you can, if you, I start over. I recommend getting a scale or going to the post office with all your items in the packaging that you plan on doing and saying, can you please weigh this, 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 and this, and please tell me what it would be to ship in three different zip codes. So, you know, if you're central United States, you want to pick one on the east coast, you want to pick one on the west coast, you want to pick one right in, in the center and, and get those three. If you're on the east coast, you know, wherever you are, you want to try to get, because it costs more to ship to the north than it does to ship to the south. Mm -hmm. So when I ship from North Carolina to New Jersey, it's more expensive than it is for someone to ship from New Jersey to North Carolina by like okay. a good dollar fifty. Hmm. Um, you know, and shipping to California is more expensive if you're on the East Coast and vice versa. And I know my mother used to have a, a shop where she would sell uh, antique items that she would would find. And she lost money sometimes because she didn't. Aww. You know, well, I should say really lost money, but just <laughs> broke even because she. Yeah didn't um, calculate her shipping costs correctly. Okay. So one thing you can do is just list the item for say $25 and do free shipping. And make sure you put really big and bold in your listing, free shipping. Yeah. Because it's like the post office. You, the customer is really paying for it, but, but they don't necessarily think they are. Yeah. So that's definitely something you can um, decide whether to do. If you are not going to have um, very accurate shipping costs, then I would I would probably recommend, at least in the beginning, doing free shipping and, and rolling that in. You might make out better in some deals. You might make out worse in others. But you'll get an idea of what shipping costs are. And then you can, you can always change your listings. You can go in and edit them. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, when you are doing, so you everything you sell is your pattern. <clears throat> yes, right now. Um, although, because I've posted so many free patterns that I love, there are a few things on my site that I would you know, I would obviously need to ask permission, but there are things on there that I would want to make just for fun and maybe list them, but right well, now I'm just filling, filling my own items right now. Technically, you don't need to ask permission. Oh, really? You can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of, that, there's a lot of um, controversy, but people will say in their listings, like, you cannot sell this item. Oh, that's, that's. Not doesn't stand in any any law. No one I, can tell you legally tell you what you can do with an item. Right. They can tell you they don't want you to, but 
if you want to do it anyway, you can do it anyway. Um, I personally would stay away myself. I would stay away from those listings just because I'm, I don't want to help somebody who is saying, um, this is, you know, you can make it for yourself, but you can't make it to sell. Um, right. All of my patterns are, anybody can go and sell them. I encourage people to, to make money with their crochet. That's what they're there for. Whether it be a free paid free pattern or a paid pattern, mm -hmm. you can only make so much for yourself and for gifts. I mean, if you're doing this for a living, you need to be able to, to make some patterns. So uh, if somebody's pattern explicitly says, do not sell this pattern, then you have to make the choice whether you want to honor that or not. But right. um, you, you don't have to. You can do whatever you want with your finished item. You can't sell the pattern, but you right. can sell the finished item. Well, I agree with you. I'm the same way. I feel like, you know, if people want to make things and sell them, please feel free to do so. But um, I guess I guess I knew what you were saying, too, that I, you technically don't have to ask permission. But, I, you know, I wonder if that the, the, so that even applies to, like, books and everything. Is that true? Like, meaning if there's a pattern in a book and you make it, you can sell it that applies, item? Or, it applies to everything. Really? Um, because they can't tell you what you can do with a finished item. They okay. didn't make the finished item. Um, if the only copyright thing you have to worry about is if it's like a character, mm -hmm. but you're not going to find that, that uh, pattern anywhere. You might find right. that free pattern somewhere. I would not put copyrighted characters in your Etsy page, Etsy right. store. Um, we discussed this, I think, like two shows ago. Yeah, I remember. That. <laughs> they can totally shut you down. Yeah, um, okay. They don't even have to ask you to take it off. If they're in a bad mood that day, all they got to do is complain in your shop is they can just remove the listing or they can really just remove your shop completely from, uh -huh. from Etsy. So you don't want to run, you really don't want to run that risk. Yeah. Um, if you want to sell character items, you know, if you want to sell a hat that looks like Mickey Mouse, you can put, you know, mouse hat. Um, <laughs> it would not put Mickey Mouse hat. Right. Um, so, yeah, you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to ask anybody's permission to do okay. it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I think that's it on, on that. I forget what we were even talking about before that. Um, pattern credit. Oh, so yes. I would personally give pattern credit. Um, I do ask uh, when people sell my items, I do ask if they would put uh, design or pattern by creation crochet. Of course, I don't. they don't have to. By law, they don't have to do anything. But... It is nice um, when they do put that, and I do appreciate when they do that because a lot of times, it, people are looking at the shop are not only people who are looking to buy, but there are people who are looking to also sell uh, or make things for themselves or, or you know whatnot. So it's nice for them to be able to find on the pattern someplace. They they yeah. could Google item, you know, they could um, image search it and find it anyway. But it is nice to. To kind of, you know, we're giving you free patterns you can sell to make money yeah. with. It is nice for you to kind of scratch our back a little bit too and, and yeah. get that you got for pattern from us. Um, and that is, you share a lot of patterns. We'll get a little little off topic. Mm -hmm. um, that, like I said, that's how we met. You know, you I find a lot of great things through your site that I would have never otherwise found. Yeah. So do you do you um look for things or do you just um. Yeah, I did. I mean, it started out as a hobby. Um, I learned to crochet maybe like three years ago. Could be going on four now. I don't know. Um, but and then I had I was not an online person. Like I just never got online. But then after you know when I would want to learn a new stitch or something, I would go on and Google it. And then I started finding bloggers and everything. And I was falling in love with all these bloggers. And so Tangled Happy basically just started as an intention to be a collective, just to kind of keep track of. You know, inspiring things I found that other people might be interested in. Um, and, you know, I find a lot of things now on Pinterest, and some, some things on Ravelry, some other sharing sites. But also, um, I do try to visit people that leave comments and things like that. And I've found a lot of patterns that way just by communicating with people that visit Tangled Happy and being like, oh, well, this person has a really cool pattern too and linking that up. and. So I guess now that I've been doing it so long, um, I've just networked to where I can see things, you know, even on Facebook, because I'm friends with a lot of designers and things, and so I don't know, it just comes from everywhere, all over the web, so. Yeah, I've met a lot of really good friends. I actually um, met someone, she's in South Africa, and it's funny, because she's like, oh, my little American friend, um, yeah. you know, but 
she does amazing graphics. She um, works on, um, what should she say, uh, furniture um, oh. manufacturing. So she oh. works with PowerPoint a lot with designing these furniture pieces. So she had done, like, she shared, she asked me my opinion on the pattern. She had never published a pattern before. She's very much like I used to be, where she would just kind of crochet from her head. Mm -hmm. um, have to have uh, HAV, the number two, HAVZ, I think, is her Etsy shop. I mean, her um, Facebook shop. She has, like, these gorgeous purses that the flap for them is, like, half a doily. Like, like, I saw that like, on your page. Yeah, those are really pretty. Gorgeous. Um, mm -hmm. And the shop she was going to sell them to in um, South Africa pulled out on her for some reason, so I'm going to try Aww. to help her send them here. Yeah. Um, but she's like, you know, can you help me look at this pattern? I've never seen a pattern that was like this perfect. Oh. It was charted, and I'm like, oh, what software did you use? She's like, oh, I do it myself in PowerPoint. Wow. And a heart, like this big, like all charted. Um, and yeah, she did the, the, the stitch <laughs> diagram and mm -hmm. um, the stitches, like a, an illustration of the stitch. It was amazing. Okay. And I'm like, where? How the hell did you do this? But she she um, needs help with writing patterns and um, publishing them, and I need help with learning to do more graphics. So yeah, are working back and forth, um, just like you know with you, you have shared my patterns, and then you needed you know a little help with your Etsy shop, and mm -hmm. so it's it's a very like um, it's great to meet people. Yes. Uh, online. Well, and it would be a lonely lonely thing to be a blogger and not really you know communicate with other people because. Especially if you are doing this like yourself as a job, you know, if you're not communicating with the other people out there, it's just, it wouldn't be very fun. So. Yeah, it would be boring. <laughs> I'd like yeah. to talk. <laughs> uh, one of the other things we had talked about with the shop is uh, having a lot of listings in your shop. Mm -hmm. So people tend, all right, so say you go to the supermarket and you've got um, two sections of eggs. Which one are you going to get the eggs from? Are you going to get the eggs from where there's like two egg cartons? Or are you going to get your eggs from where there's 40 egg cartons? I know oh, I'm going to go to the one where there's like a lot of egg cartons or, or anything. You know, if you're buying clothes, you're going to automatically be drawn to the place where there are a lot of them. Um, and the same is with, with Etsy stores. Is people are going to be drawn to your shop when it, if it gives the uh, appearance of being more professional looking or more popular or you know who's going to have all these listings on the shop if they're not actually selling them so it's all kind of like a mind game um, you know when it comes to, to selling so definitely have quite a few listings that's something I never did I always said I was going to do um, put more on but I was busy doing other stuff yeah. and um, you know and it's um, it is a lot of work once you get them listed you can just keep relisting them so what I do also recommend is instead of listing like every hat you make, um, you know, make the same hat in 20 different colors or 10 different colors or five different colors so that you don't have to put as many listings up. Um, and you can do the variations like we talked about where you can say you can buy this in red, purple, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can also list them separately. Um, so you can have the same listing in all these different colors. But definitely have your shop. So it's at least one, one full page of listings, maybe even two pages of listings, but at least the one full page of listings. Um, so that is my recommendation for that. Oh, excuse me. Um, the other thing is there are more shops than just than just Etsy. Yeah. So if you are selling patterns, then we had discussed um, Craftsy and Ravelry. And you sell your patterns on, you do Ravelry too, or do you just do Craftsy? Yes, I actually do both. Um, and I think Craftsy is really cool because they actually don't charge fees to designers. So there's no fee to list or sell your items on Craftsy. Um, the only negative thing about Craftsy is you have to do a PDF. So um, for bloggers, if people don't already know, the way us bloggers uh, make a living and can afford to put so much time and energy into our free patterns is we get... Uh, revenue from advertising on our sites. So we um, apply for accounts with Google or Bing or Paper Media X or all these different companies and they put, um, we implement code to put their ads on our blog and, and that's how we make money. So we're not necessarily doing everything for, for free. We're not getting paid much. I mean, mind you, it's 
pennies. <laughs> Especially when, when you first start out uh, of what you're making. Of course, you know, the more views you have, the more money you're going to make. But, um, you know, so we want as many people as possible to come to our blog. Because we do make, um, you know, a little bit of money every time someone visits. Um, and, you know, if they click on our ads and things like that, it's different rates and whatnot. But, so with Craftsy, uh, you have to do a PDF so people can find the full pattern. Well, what I do on Craftsy is if it's a paid pattern, I do list it, you know, just normally in the shop for sale. If it's not, if it's a free pattern, I actually don't put it there. I put it in, like, you know how you can go there and just link up a finished item? Yeah, I do that too. Okay, I just you do put it in there. a different section. Yeah, I only put it in the finished item section with a link. Ah. I don't put the PDF there because I'm like you. I want people to visit my site to get the pattern. I'm not going to put it on. Craftsy I didn't even know there was an the option. Page. So I'll have to look. I know when I list my patterns on Craftsy that there are two ways to, to get them. I do have it. Um, and I've only put like three patterns on Craftsy because they take a little while to, to do them on yeah. Craftsy. When I do pay patterns, I'll, I'll definitely put my paid patterns on there. But Yeah. Um, I have it set up so that you have to link to get to my blog, you know, but they do require a PDF. No, technically you could you don't have to put the whole pattern on the PDF. You can put some oh, pattern about that. Okay. and put a link to to your your things. They don't they don't tell you you can't. I mean maybe well, that's one day they will. Good idea too. I mean I have never thought of that, but yeah. Tricky tricky. There's yes, there's loopholes around everything. Um, <laughs> so you can do that. So if you're selling patterns, you can list them on, on Etsy, you can list them on Craftsy, Ravelry. Um, I, I don't know about the other shops like Artfire. Um, do I have listed here? Well, you can also yeah. list patterns Shopify. on Facebook now too, right? On Facebook. I haven't done that yet, but... I don't know. I think I know some of the pattern designers are selling directly via Facebook now. You can sell directly through anything if you have a PayPal account. Ah. Um, so I could put, you know, because the same with selling finished items. So you don't have to okay. have an Etsy shop. You can sell just through your Facebook page. Okay. It's harder to get um, business that way because people are not looking. The only people that are going to see that are the people who are on your page. Um, where it is through Etsy, people are searching and, and coming right. up with things. Um, but you can sell things. Um, you know, to anybody. I have friends pay um, for stuff on PayPal or they just send me a check or whatever. But um, other online stores, if you're going to go that route where you're going to go an actual online store is, I like Copious a lot. I found Copious like a year and a half ago. It's like a mix between Pinterest and Etsy. So the, the listings show up like Pinterest, like pins. And then it's got a little price on it. But then when you click on it, it looks more like an Etsy listing. So you can do all the same things where you can put a description and, and the price and the shipping and, and all that information. You can put a little more information in the copious listing. And it's more like a, um, there's not that much crochet stuff on it right now. Or at least there wasn't the last time I looked. It was more like people sell nail polish, people sell shoes, people oh. sell clothes. So it's kind of like more high fashion. So I want it put mm -hmm. like... Um, certain things on it, but if you have a, a scarf or a woman's hat or even like a, a cute infant newborn hat or something like that, I would definitely put things like, like that on Copious. Um, so that site isn't specific to handmade or it is? No, it's not. It's, oh, okay. um, a lot of things that people sell are like used clothes, but high fashion items. Like It's more like the younger uh, younger generation. I want to sell doilies and stuff like that on it, but um, <laughs> I might, my crochet ring necklaces did really, really good when I listed them. I sold like, I listed like six at once. I sold like five of them within like four hours because oh. as um, as time goes by, your listings move down. So you're going to oh. want, you can keep relisting them. That's like the downfall of it is okay. um, you have to like renew your listing or, or relist it. Um, but when you first put them up, it's like Pinterest that shows up at the top. So okay. um, it, it's it's cool to check out, even if you only list a couple things on it, um, just to kind of get a feel for it. Or maybe you're more um, like funky or, or you know um, edgy things. But like I said, a lot of things are like um, designer clothes that someone's selling out of their closet or, or things like that. So it's um, 
kind of fun. I have not checked out Artfire or Shopify other than just looking um, at their site. Uh, there's Indulgy too, which is very much like Pinterest. Uh, and when you do list things on Copious or Etsy, you can go ahead and share them on Facebook or uh, Pinterest. So a lot of times you'll see things on Pinterest that have like a little banner at the bottom. It will have like a price on it. They're sale items. Um, so you know you kind of it's almost like free advertising. You know, so you you don't want to like spam your Facebook page or no. Facebook page or, or Pinterest with it. But you can always list a couple things here or there, like your um, maybe a new listing, you know, or yeah, something definitely. that you just came out with. Yeah, promoting new items or something on sale. But yeah, I wouldn't just do that constantly. But definitely, yeah, use them to promote. People tune you, tune you out if you are constantly doing that. Yeah. Uh, what are some ways? Well, we have our blogs, so we can advertise on our blogs. But that's true. Um, do you do any other type of like marketing or advertising? Um, I haven't done a lot of that. Um, mostly all I've done is do actually like button swaps with other bloggers and things like that. Um, I haven't done any paid advertising, but I do think that you know I would in the future. Like if I started putting a lot of listings in, I would definitely be open to trying. You know to promote through other bloggers or even trying the Etsy ads or Facebook ads or something like that. I think they can be very helpful. I guess technically it is Etsy, right? E, like E-Trade, E-Commerce, E. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm still calling it Etsy. Oh, I, no, I think <laughs> I say it wrong. Everyone else calls it Etsy. I call it Etsy. Uh, it probably should be Etsy. Like, it's probably what it was meant meant to be. I don't I guess know. That's one of those things that just got, uh, got changed. Potato, potato, I guess. Either, either. <laughs> I think that's it on my list. Do you have anything else on your list? Um, I think we got it all. Good. Um, one thing I did see in the chat that somebody was letting us know, you can also print, apparently, your tracking labels directly off of Etsy for your first class mail. So that's another okay. option for shipping. Cool. So, yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, you, you know, if you're doing like a simple headband, maybe um, tracking is not a big deal. But yeah. if you're doing big things, so for patterns, actually, um, Etsy they now have um, the instant download, right? Though they didn't yes. have it before. Yes, it's awesome. <laughs> so they finally they finally got smart. And if people don't know, Etsy started off as um, like a husband and wife started this business. So we talk about following your dreams and um, you know. Uh, a lot of people think, well, what can, you know, I'm not going to ever make it big doing anything, or I'm never going to be able to make this um, my career and make a living out of it. And I've been able to turn this into my career in really just a year. Um, October 14th was my son's birthday is when we moved back to North Carolina. So maybe like two weeks later, I started going full force in my blog. So like right around the beginning of November. So it's been less than a year, and I've been able to turn this into my full-time career and doing lots of different things um, and it grows a little bit more every month mm -hmm. but um, you know, Sarah and I were talking she, you know, she said well you, you kind of have gotten really big in the last year and um, that's because I go out there I stick my neck out and I approach people and um, you know I, I'm not really too afraid of rejection and someone <laughs> tells me no they tell me no but yeah. you've got to follow your dreams so you, I would rather regret having done something than regret not having done something because there's there's two sides to that and you never know what could have happened at least if you do something you know that it, it was or was not going to happen yeah. but you know Etsy started off as a husband and a wife that decided to have this little online e-commerce store and everybody sells and buys on Etsy it's bigger than eBay um, you know it's look at Craigslist you know or, or Angie's list even um, you know Angie's list started off as just a mom blogging um, yeah. about different things and she's huge so you can definitely uh, you know with the right motivation and um, you know putting yourself out there a little bit grow really big I know people who are supporting their children and their, their families on on selling their their finished items and um, you know but this, these people they put a lot of work into it um, yeah. and, and it does require a lot of time and a lot of work especially in the beginning Yes, it does. Um, I mean, say, you know, you were talking, it's your hobby, but, you know, you want to eventually turn it into your business, but you realize how much 
how much work that is, and you get burned out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and work. actually, I was telling you earlier before we started um, that our, our town doesn't have a local yarn store. So I actually would love to open a yarn store, and that was kind of, even back when I first started Tangled Happy, I was like, man, I'd really love to do that. So that's kind of my dream. But obviously, opening a yarn store takes a lot of money, so I'm still working on the money part. But yeah, I mean, I feel like Tangled Happy is a step, you know, toward that ultimate goal in the future. Exactly, and it's a great name. I mean, if you ever do open a, a yarn shop, it's a great name. So yeah. I had said my goal was to work with a yarn company, and I really thought that that wouldn't be for years down the road. Um, yeah. You know, and I'm fortunate enough that it happened early, but um. That doesn't mean I'm done dreaming. Now I just made a bigger goal for myself. But right. I wrote them down. I literally took a book and said in um, you know, two months or three months I want to be here. In six months I want to be here. In a year I want to be here. These are my short-term goal, goal, short goals. These are my long-term goals. Yeah. You know, when your long-term goal is to own a, a yarn shop, it's not at all impossible to do that. Yeah. You, know, you can start by selling yarn yeah. you know, online. Yeah, I would like to make that happen soon, actually. So. <laughs> well, well, we'll chat. I know some people who do it. Um, oh, okay. And um, I, I want to say Darn Good Yarn is setting something up with that. So oh, really? I don't remember. Um, I didn't really look into it too much because I, it's just something that I, I don't need to take extra on right now. I always said I wanted to own a, like a craft store where the, the shop by me, every Friday, people... Uh, they have like a stitch and bitch every Friday. Yeah. So all the women come in, and I'm the only, when I go, I'm the only one lone crocheter. Oh, and that's terrible. Is I know. You know, and you really feel like they're all like snubbing their nose. There was one other crocheter. <laughs> um, she moved though. Um, her and I started becoming friendly, but she moved um, out of state. They're military. Oh. So um, uh, now I'm the only crocheter there again. So I don't really go very often because I have you know my daughter's not in bed till. They start like at two o'clock. They end at like nine. Oh, wow. Uh, well, because they're all older women who knit. Oh, okay. You know, okay. Or middle aged, um, you know, or some come right after work or whatever. Yeah. You know, but it's great. I want to have that where it's like a community. Yeah. Where it's more yeah, than just definitely. selling selling yarn. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Now, how far are you from Wichita? Um, I think we're at least an hour and a half. I think. Oh, really? It's that far? Yeah. Might be even two hours, but I'm not for sure. So. I know people in Wachita. I know I have friends in Wachita, so yeah. Maybe it's not too far. Maybe when I come down, we'll. Oh yeah, no, we can break. meet up. We can meet halfway. <laughs> um, you know, I definitely I have like a million things I want to do, and you know, they're not like I said, they're not done yet, but work towards them. You know, what's the yeah. worst that's going to happen is you're not going to going to get to that ultimate place, but you're going to learn so much along the way yeah. and just be open to new experiences and, um, you know, to learning new information and things like that. Um, I'm going to take a look at the chat room real quick. Do you, is there anything else in there that you see? Oh, and I remember we got to do something else. Someone talked about Pick Monkey um, with color. Um, I had um, one of the listings I just did, I was wearing, or re posted pictures for I was wearing a cream colored hat and it didn't it just didn't show good in the in the lighting. Um so I put like a green filter over it and it just made a huge difference. So it made the the like overly um exposed yarn go back to that pretty cream color. So you can do yeah. um, yeah. you can do overlays, you can there's just so excuse me, so much you can do with it. Drinking my wine's making me a little purple <laughs> It's that cheap cheap white wine. Um <laughs> We ran out. I had. A, I went to like the local. Well, North Carolina, you can buy alcohol anywhere. You know, wine and beer, you oh. can buy anywhere. So, um, we have like an Exxon down the street from us that mm -hmm. you can we can walk to. So I went and bought some really cheap, cheap, <laughs> cheap white wine. Um, but what we're talking about I'm talking about my wine. Um, you're talking about the chat and pick monkey. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so there's different things for different. You know, you can add these different filters. So. There is a little bit of investment that you can make. Um, like I said, you know, a lot of people are afraid to make an investment into a business. And it will help you grow faster. So uh, there's been a lot of investments that I've made in, in my business. I recently got the Stitch um, software. I got my mannequin. You know, she was like, I don't know, like $100 for my mannequin. Um, I bought the um, 
the software from, from PicMonkey. You know, but these things are making my business so much better so that it can grow and I can make more money. Yeah. So, like I said, you know, you want to take some of the money that you've made in your business and reinvest it into your business and just keep building that way. So I started off very slow. I had a, a free blog, um, which I couldn't put ads on. And um, then when I sold a couple of items, I got a, a paid blog that I could put ads on. And I just extensively, you know, grew grew from there. Yeah. Existentially. Um, <laughs> you know, so you definitely, like I said, just have a dream, write it down, start working towards it. Don't be afraid to invest a little bit of money into it, and, and as time goes by, invest a little bit more. Yeah. So there, that's really my advice for starting an Etsy shop. Do you have any last-minute advice for anybody? Nope. I would just go along with you, and I would say, you know, even if you just have to pick a percentage and say, I'm, you know, I need money to bring home, so, but I'm going to promise to put 10% back in, you know, just start somewhere, so... We have talked about pricing in other episodes of my show. If this is the first time you are turning, tuning in um, and you're selling on Etsy, in my Selling Your Crochet series, we have discussed uh, a lot of different things, one of the major things being pricing. So make sure you are charging appropriately, um, both for the industry and for yourself. So check out uh, my blog and my Selling Your Crochet series. You go to the top of my blog, uh, I think all the way to the right, there is a um, tab that says business and the Selling Your Crochet series is there as well as some other business information. Um, Sarah has free patterns available on it's tangledhappy.blogspot.com and I will link that in, in my Facebook page um, again as well. Actually, why don't you type it into the um, chat room real okay. quick too so that everybody has it. And we are going to be doing a giveaway in the chat room. So we don't have too many people in there tonight. We have four people in the chat room. So um, do you want to just do four patterns, Des? Is there some more? Yeah, sure. We could do a free pattern for each person. That would be great. A free pattern, a free tangled happy pattern for each person. Um, mm -hmm. Sarah does have the free ones on her blog, but she also has paid ones uh, in her Etsy shop. I'll put my link to my shop, and they can pick it and either awesome. message me or message you, whatever you want to do. Awesome, yeah. So if you are already a fan of mine, you can message me, or you can um, go to Tangled Happy uh, on Facebook, um, and there's also links to that. And also on my blog, um, Sarah is listed on my blog as one of uh, the blogs that I follow. So you can contact her that way, or you can um, I can set you up with her, and you can get your free pattern. And uh, I think that is it. Let me see if there's any last minute questions in our. Doo -doo -doo. I don't see any. All right, so I think we're cool. Okay. So it was nice to see everybody again. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Sarah, for being our guest. Definitely check out, having me. check out her blog and her Etsy shop. If you have any questions at any point later, you can definitely um, ask either Sarah and I. We'd be happy to help you out with what we can. And have a great night and happy hooking. Again, this uh, episode was brought to you by Darn Good Yarn at darngoodyarn.com. Have a great night. Bye, Sarah. Bye. Thanks.